in one corner, we have the Appositura. Ding, 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 ding. And in the other corner, the Achakatura. Ding, 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 ding. And in this video, they will do battle to see who survives. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of ornamental notes. And their names are in Italian. I'm going to say them sort of in Italian with a very bad Italian accent. The appagiatura and the acciaccatura. <laughs> and then for the rest of this time, I'll just be saying appagiatura and acciaccatura. Okay. So as we have learned in other videos of this series, ornamental notes are not necessary to the communication of a melody, but they make things sound prettier just like ornaments on a Christmas tree or even ornaments that you put on a shelf. You know, we call them decorations or statues or whatever. They uh, serve to make things prettier, uh, more interesting, and so on. All right. So we're going to talk about these two that get a lot. Of, there's a lot of confusion about the appoggiatura and the achakatura because they look so similar and they sort of sound similar as well in, in the sense that they're played sort of similar. So um, we'll talk about them. We'll talk about the rules. <laughs> and then, dun, 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 I'll give you the real deal about the appoggiatura and the achakatura. You ready? You'll see these uh, notations in music all the time. And if nobody has even pointed it out to you, you might not notice the very slight difference between them. So I'm going to show you. First, we will talk about the appoggiatura. You'll see here on the example on your screen that there's a big note in each measure that is a C. And in each measure, there's also a little note that comes before the C. The little note looks like an eighth note. It can, it can also look like a sixteenth note. There are different ways of writing it. So the little note that comes before it, it's just a regular eighth note, but smaller. This is the appoggiatura. Appoggiatura in Italian comes from the word to lean upon. So you can think of an appoggiatura as leaning into the note. So without the appoggiatura, I would play these two measures like this. Just two Cs. But the first one has a D appoggiatura and the second one has a B appoggiatura, meaning the first one is approached from above and the second one is approached from below. Here's what it sounds like with the appoggiatura. Right? You like da 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 da. A lot of times in music, uh, this is seen as kind of like a sigh. You're like, <sighs> you'll hear it a lot in um, Mozart's Lagrimosa. Uh, I can't play it here, <laughs> but um, I'll put links to the music. You'll hear it. Ba -da, da -da, da -da. Those are appoggiaturas. And the appoggiatura happens on the beat. Okay? So if I were going to add some left hand to it, without the appoggiatura, it would sound like this. Here's the both, both measures without the appoggiatura. Here are both measures with the appoggiatura. Okay? So the appoggiatura stand, starts on the beat, and it actually takes time away from the big note. It steals time away. How much time? It really depends on your interpretation of the piece, how fast it is. This is where the musical variations of... Um, the context of what's happening as well as the performer's preference and the tradition with which that particular piece has been played, how it's been handed down. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So the appoggiatura on the beat, it's a little note. It can be an eighth note, can be a sixteenth note. Um, a lot of times it's considered to be it's considered to split whatever that beat is into twos. So if the beat is a quarter note, then each, the appoggiatura and the big note get half a beat. Eighth note, one and. But again, it's not a hard and fast rule. Depends on the context, the performer, and the tradition of how that piece has been performed. 
handed down. The onset, onset and softness is where it differs from grace note. So, so grace note is a general way of saying apajatura. It can also refer to a chakatura. Again, it's not hard and fast rules. I've heard both a, an achakatura and an apajatura called a grace note. Notice the grace note is in English. So it's different uh, names for ba basically the same thing in different um, languages. For example, the word slur is in English, but in Italian it's called legato. Same thing. Connect the notes. So now let's talk about the achakatura. Achakatura. You'll notice the achakatura also is a little note that comes before a big note. The difference with the achakatura is it's got a diagonal line going through the stem. So that's how we know it's an achakatura and not an apogatura. You can have, there is a fly <laughs> flying on my screen. Hold on. And it's getting on my camera. Go away. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. He was trying to be a part of this video. There's nothing to eat in this room. Go away. <laughs> All right. So the achakatura can be more than one note, can be two notes, can be three notes. Um, apajaturas, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, I'm not a music theorist, theorist the apajatura, I think, is one note. I could be wrong here, okay? But as I recall, it's one note. So the achakatura happens before the beat, and it doesn't steal any time away from the big note. I'll play the top line of the music that you see. It's just a series of Ds. I'll play it without the achakatura. Here we go. All right. So the achakatura in the first measure is from above the note. And if my beat is... Let's see, let's see. Where this is one and two, or one E and uh, two E and. Uh. So the echacatura happens before beat one, in this case, if I'm putting it on beat one, or whatever beat the big note is on, the echacatura happens right before. And it doesn't take any time. Like if you were counting the beats, you would not even acknowledge. I'll show you. I'll count the beats out loud. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and... Uh. So you see, I play the achakatura and I come right off of it. So remember I said the apajatura comes from the word to lean, lean, and the, apajatura, the apajatura is like you're leaning into the big note. Achakatura comes from the word that means to crush crush. So imagine you're, now I don't want you to develop tension as you're playing. It's not about, you know, hitting the key, but you're like crushing into it. Right? So the achakatura would not be, takes too much time. You just crush into it. Okay. The second measure that you see, uh, the achakatura is coming from below the note. And again, I'll count one E and uh, two E and Three E and four E and so you see we didn't acknowledge the achakatura as far as the rhythm the rhythm in the music of course we play it right and if you'll notice that in the way I'm playing it I'm playing the achakatura pretty light and I'm leaning into the big note the main note is that how it's always done again no really depends. Uh, you know, when you look up the stuff online or in like the really short videos, they'll tell you that something is always like this, but that's actually not true. In general, it's true, but there are always individual instances where it's not true. And again, I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. So if I have two notes for the achakatura, again, they come before the big beat. So I'll do it again. One E and two E and three E and four E and so you see I did it before the the uh 
and the number. So it didn't even come like on the previous 16th note. It just kind of sneak it in there. And again, depends on how fast is the piece that you're playing. Okay, and like how much time do you actually have? So remember earlier, I said that there are the rules and then there, there's the reality. There are a lot of pieces that have these kinds of ornamental notes where they're performed by major, well-known pianists, very well-respected, and the appoggiatura might be played like an achacatura, and the achacatura might be played like an appoggiatura. Why would that be? Lots of different reasons. So remember again that there was not like one day when people got together and decided they were going to make up the rules of music, just kind of evolved. And this might be hard to believe, but before the days of the internet, before the days of television, phones, even cars, most people stayed very regional. They were born and lived and died basically in a very small area. And regional traditions were a thing. These regional traditions also applied to music. So there were certain ways of doing things. And there might even be certain ways of doing things that were widespread. That, for example, in the Baroque era, basically Bach, Bach's time, you were expected to know when to put in ornaments. They weren't necessarily written in. So part of being a performer, um, now not a pianist, because again, there were no pianos at his time, but a keyboard performer, and that's what we're talking about because this is a piano channel, but it applies to different instruments. You were expected to know at what point in the music you could put in an ornament and what kind you could do. So there were traditions, there were ways of doing things, and sometimes they were different in different regions. And so they were notated differently as well. There was not one time when someone said, I'm going to, I'm going to say there's a, a chakaturas and a pasaturas, and this is what they look like. Not really. Another reason that these ornaments might be played differently than what the rules say is because, uh, well, manuscripts were written, you know, a long time ago, and who knows how they were transferred into printed music. Maybe there was a slash through a note that didn't wasn't uh, showing. Who knows, right? So it's very different from the days of computers now where everything is crystal clear. It's instantly communicated. It can be changed. If there was a mistake, I can go in and edit, right? Whereas if, you know, let's say 200 years ago, a manuscript is printed with mistakes, you can't collect all those manuscripts back and make the changes. Could be that. The third reason that an, a, a chakatura and an appositura might be differently play, played differently than the rules say is because of tradition. Traditionally, this piece has been played like this, even though it goes against the rules of these two ornamental notes. It's been played like this, and it's been handed down over the ages. There are a lot of pieces that you can find videos, video performances for, and if you look at the sheet music, you'll see that the performer is not going by the rules of whatever they're supposed to do. And then the final one, which is my favorite reason, is as a performer, you have the right and the responsibility to play the music in the way that you want to play it. That's a little different from playing it how you can play it. Like if you don't have the technical skills, you're limited and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm talking about is you have the technical skills, you have the musical knowledge. So you're not just going by, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. I'll just make something up. What I'm talking about is someone who has the skills, the knowledge, the experience, and on top of that says, I know the rule is this, but I really like it like this, and that's how I'm going to play it. That's my favorite, because that's where the, um, that's where the music comes to life. Now, if you do want to be able to play the music you want to play and not be limited by your skills or your knowledge of music and... <laughs> you're willing to put in the time to actually learn this stuff, I've got a membership site that you're going to love. 
you've got full access to all of my courses, all of my tutorials, all of my master classes, and you get a brand new three minute daily workout every single day that disappears in 24 hours. <laughs> you can even try it out for free for seven days to get an idea of what it's like inside the membership. Go ahead and click the link below and you can register for your free seven day trial. No obligation, no questions asked, no hard sells. Now, if you want to learn all about how to play trills and mordants, you'll want to check out these two videos next. Keep practicing, have fun, and I'll see you soon.